Hey, so today we're going to start off with a beginner's guide to what is looping. For those of you who may be wondering what all is involved about this thing that you've seen on the internet or maybe your friends have talked about, you've seen on Facebook, Instagram. So if you're wondering what looping is in a general sense, that's what this video is about. And it all kind of starts if you think about when you try and explain type 1 diabetes to people who aren't in the community or not in your family and you try and tell them about it and they get a far away look in their eyes and they really lose interest because it all is really confusing. And so then you learn the habit of trying to explain it really as simply as you can. You don't overwhelm them and you keep it really basic. You start with things like, my daughter has type 1 diabetes, which means her pancreas doesn't produce its own insulin. She has to inject insulin based on her blood sugar. If she gives too much insulin, then her blood sugar drops. And if she doesn't give enough insulin, her blood sugar goes high. And at which point you usually get some remark like, oh, so you have to do those finger pokes and syringes like on TV, or I remember a kid in my elementary school did that too. Or my favorite, oh, so she has an insulin pump. You know, I've heard about those. Yes, she has an insulin pump, which only means she doesn't have to use a syringe. And she has this really cool device that measures her blood sugar every five minutes. So yeah, she doesn't do as many finger sticks and pokes as she used to. And then they say, oh, so it's all automated, right? The pump gives insulin based on the other device, the one that measures the blood sugar, because you said it's all about blood sugar and insulin. And at which points you'd say, yeah, you'd think so, but no, I still have to tell the pump what to do. It's a pretty stupid pump. And that's you after a night of Dexcom alarms going off and you adjusting insulin delivery and giving corrections or sipping on juice, thinking, yeah, you'd think so. Because you're actually acting like a closed loop system all the time. You get new input, like you see a new blood sugar value come in, you eat carbs and you bolus, or you're about to go out to exercise, and you do a prediction of what your blood sugars are going to do. If you see that you're falling fast, you might kind of think, hey, in the near future, I might go low and you'll do something about it. Or if you're going to go exercise, you might decide to change your insulin pump delivery. You'll set a temp basal. You'll do something that will involve based on what you predicted would happen in the future. And you take a manual action to change your insulin delivery. And that little loop, that change in insulin delivery feeds back constantly every time you get new input. When you change your activity, when you change what you're eating, when you get a new finger stick or a new CGM value, you're constantly looping all day long. That's what closed loop insulin delivery is, is it's taking new inputs, making predictions and changing behaviors or insulin delivery. So why wouldn't we want to automate it? If we automated this process, we could reduce the mental fatigue that it takes to make all these decisions constantly. You could have uninterrupted sleep. If your tendency was to go low and your blood sugars are going lower, it sure would be nice if your pump said, hey, maybe I'll give you a little less insulin and let you sleep. Um, you could have more time and attention for non-type 1 parts of your life. Maybe you're not interrupted at work meetings by Dexcom alarms or feeling low or feeling high. You could also reduce human error. When you're tired and you're sleep deprived, you can make some pretty crazy errors with insulin delivery. So why hasn't this happened? Well, Truth is, there's not much additional profit to the people who make your insulin pump and CGMs to offer automation. They're already selling you their products. So how does automation get them any more money or any reason to work faster? Well, that's starting to change. It could be confusing or scary for people. Oh my gosh, if your life depends on insulin delivery, turning it over to an automated system that you might not know much about could be kind of scary. I get it. It's also new regulatory territory. The FDA hasn't had the chance to look through this, to think through it, to see the test results, see clinical trials, and understand it all. So it's a slow new regulatory process. It also requires 
really good solid CGM data. If you don't have a good idea about your continuous glucose monitor working really well to automate these decisions, that could be dangerous. And CGMs just only started really getting that good as in as good as they need to be just recently. So there were some good reasons for why automation hasn't happened. But that started to change. In late 2013, people started using this term, we are not waiting. And where did that come from? What is it? It's basically a bunch of people that said, wait, the puzzle pieces are coming into place. I'm, I don't want to be a profit center. I just want this automation to work. And some people started looking at their Dexcom data and wondering why they couldn't access it away from their house, away from their kid. Why did they have to be right there? So they started, and I'll use the term lightly, hacking the Dexcom system to be able to see it in more parts of their life more conveniently. At the same time, some really smart people started looking at their Medtronic pump that they were using and saying, there's a lot of information in my pump that I'd like to see outside of my pump or be able to control not with just my fingers touching these buttons. And also some people started looking at those two things together and the math and the logic sequence of insulin dosing and that predicted blood sugar is how can I automate or expect what's going to happen in the future if I know about the insulin I've given and I know about the food I've eaten, it seems like I should be able to have an automated way of predicting what's going to happen to my blood sugars. And then there was some equipment involved in putting all of these pieces together of saying, if I can get my CGM data and I can get my insulin deliveries off of my pump and I start putting the logic chain together, how can I get all these pieces to fit together? And those people did that and they made some what we're calling DIY or do-it-yourself looping systems. There's three main ones. There's Loop, there's Open APS, and Android APS. And we'll cover all of those systems in another video series, but just so you know, there's about three main systems where people said, hey, I might not be a profit center, but I could probably do some of this myself. And they went and they did it themselves. There's also some commercial systems that have started to get developed. They haven't been around as long, but they're starting to get there, in large part to the perseverance of that we are not waiting community who said, we need this sooner. We want to have better lives now, not when only the profits make sense or the slow regulatory process finally realizes that we need this. So the Medtronic 670G was the first system, commercial system, out on the market. Many of you have probably tried it or heard of it. Tandem has also come up with their X2 pump that has basal IQ, which is half of the answer, and then their control IQ will be the rest of the answer. I say half because basically it's helping prevent low blood sugars so far, but control IQ will bring in the part that helps control high blood sugars. Insulate is also developing their automated um, looping system called Horizon. So there's some on the market that are there, and there's some that are more fully being fleshed out still. So with so many terms, you might get confused. I'm using closed loop, but there's you might have heard automated insulin delivery system or aid system artificial pancreas, hybrid closed loop, dual hormone closed loop. There's a lot of terms out there, but just suffice to say that the general idea is a system that takes data about what you've eaten, what insulin has been given, where you are, takes all those pieces of inputs and it predicts your blood sugar. And based off that prediction, it tries to automate your insulin deliveries for you. So what are some considerations as you're looking into closed looping or automating your insulin delivery and whether or not you pick a commercial system or a DIY system, they all have different ways that they implement their looping. And so you need to look at what you want to do and what the system can offer and what you're comfortable with, but there's a lot of differences. What does the user need to input and how do they do it? Do they actually do it on the pump itself? or do they do it through an iPhone app like Loop does? Maybe there's new ways that'll come. Android APS is a Android-based solution. 
Um, what kind of pumps does it use? Does it use Omnipod? Does it use Medtronic? Does it use T-Slim? How is the insulin delivery altered? In other words, if you're automating this insulin delivery, how is that being done? Mostly through basal modulation. So it's going to increase or decrease your basal insulin rates, but there's also some that do tiny boluses. So they'll give a tiny bolus amount if your blood sugar is higher than a certain value it'll say ah maybe basal adjustment is a little too slow and i'll give you a little bit of bolus instead there's also what target are they trying to reach are they reaching 120 are they reaching 180 what times of day does it shift at night versus daytime can you tell it when you're exercising and you might want to aim for a higher target or a lower target can you tell them about sickness or hormones and how flexible are they? So all of these considerations go into picking the right system for you and what you're comfortable with. And we'll cover all of that in different situations, different videos. But for now, that's just the general idea of closed loop systems is that it takes the guesswork out of constantly needing to pay attention to your next blood sugar measurement and what's the next, next alarm is coming in, automated insulin delivery is designed to help you go live your life without needing to watch all of those inputs and touching your pump. It's automated for you. So hope that helps explain looping in a nutshell and we'll pick up on the next video.